The Raptor engine is the muscle of the SpaceX Starship program. Three dozen beating hearts that propel the world's largest rocket into orbit and beyond, to the moon, and eventually the planet Mars. And with that total of 36 Raptor boost engines per Starship stack, there is a pretty heavy onus on SpaceX to build a whole lot of those engines in a very short period of time. It's actually become one of the most critical factors for the overall success of SpaceX and their mission to make space travel affordable and accessible and eventually allow the human race to become a multi-planetary species. So it's a lot of pressure and SpaceX engineers are rising to the occasion. They've already managed to increase Raptor engine production to the pace of one per day, which is unheard of in the world of rocket engines. But that's still not enough. Elon Musk has set his expectation that SpaceX has to make between two and four Raptor engines every day, seven days a week, or between 800 and 1,000 Raptors coming off the assembly line every year. So let's talk about how SpaceX is making that happen. The important thing about having a very high volume production rate for the Raptor engine is not just stockpiling enough of them to send 1,000 starships to Mars. At least, not yet. But the biggest advantage this gives SpaceX engineers is the ability to rapidly iterate and improve on their design. The way Elon Musk puts it, there is more freedom you have to try new things. Because even if it goes wrong and explodes, that doesn't really matter because you know you've got a bunch of engines coming after. But if you make a small number of engines, you have to be more conservative with your design iterations because you can't risk blowing them up. Elon says that SpaceX has blown up probably around 30 Raptor engines, likely more. For example, the Raptor of today, the version 2, is an entirely different product from the first Raptors that were flown just over two years ago. The Raptor 2 is using significantly fewer parts than the version 1. So much so that SpaceX was able to shave 400 kilograms of total weight off the engine. A Raptor now comes in at 1600 kilograms total weight. And at the same time, they were actually able to increase the thrust by upping the combustion chamber pressure from 250 to 300 bar. That pushed the thrust from 185 tons to 230 tons. Elon Musk thinks there is still room to crank the Raptor up to 250 tons of thrust at 330 bar of pressure. So if we can imagine we were building out one of these Raptor engines in its current known state, it might be easiest to think of working from the top down. Your first major component would be the gimbal mechanism. Not all Raptors need one of these, but about half of them will have it. This is a hydraulic motor that is able to angle the engine up to 15 degrees on the Y and Z axis. That allows the rocket to steer both on launch and particularly during the landing burn. The gimbal links up to a hydraulic system inside of the rocket's body. Elon Musk has said that SpaceX will eventually replace the hydraulic drive with a screw type electric motor. And that's likely a change that we'll see implemented over the next year. Moving to electric will greatly simplify the Starship design and production, making it lighter and cheaper to build. Right underneath the gimbal is where we get into the oxygen power head. The oxidizer inlet pipe actually flows straight down through the gimbal and into the first stage of the pump, which is an inducer. And then that attaches with two impeller stages below that. This is our primary pump mechanism. From there, the oxygen is hitting a pre-burner, which is just a very small rocket engine that's built into the power head. This is going to mix in a little bit of the methane fuel through a cross connection and then ignite the mixture with a torch. This is only going to combust the oxidizer just enough to convert it from a liquid to a gas state and accelerate it through the nozzle of the pre-burner into the turbine where the pressurized exhaust from the pre-burner spins up the turbine, which in turn powers the inducer and impeller stage. If that all sounds out of order, that's because it is. The turbine needs to spin to operate the pump, but the pump needs to send the gas into the turbine. So SpaceX actually uses an external mechanism built into the launch mount that will spin start all of the gas turbines at the same time. On a regular rocket, you would have a pressurized onboard that would do the same job, but SpaceX is obsessed with simplification and getting as many components out of the Starship as possible. Exiting the turbine, the now gaseous oxygen is going to continue flowing straight down into the fuel injector. 
It's very important to the Raptor design that the oxidizer flows in a straight vertical path from the top to the bottom of the engine. About 78% of the combustion is fueled by the oxidizer, so we want to see maximum flow here. Running in parallel off to the side of the main body is going to be our methane power head. This does the exact same thing as the oxidizer system, the pump, the preburner, and the turbine. That turbine is going to be dumping out the gaseous methane, which is being fed through a pipe into the side of the fuel injector. The Raptor uses a swirl injection system to mix the two hot gases and stream them into the combustion chamber. The oxidizer is coming straight down through a metal pipe, and there are going to be a ton of little holes drilled into the side of that pipe where the methane gas will be pumped in. The flow of methane through the side of the pipe is going to create the swirling motion as the two elements combine and make their final approach to the combustion chamber. In there, the gas mixture is going to combust. Elon Musk has specifically said that SpaceX has been able to delete the torch igniter from the combustion chamber on the Raptor 2, so we have no idea how that combustion happens, but it does. Below that is going to be a point where the metal is compressed down to a very narrow opening. That is the throat. Pushing the exhaust from the combustion through that small opening is going to create a very large amount of pressure. The Raptor runs at 300 bar of pressure, or about 4300 psi, in the combustion chamber. The nature of energy is that it wants to flow from areas of high pressure to low pressure. So that's why the engine nozzle expands from the narrow throat to the very wide base. It's going to make the exhaust gas want to rapidly accelerate as it leaves, transferring the combustion energy to kinetic energy that pushes the rocket up into the sky. So those are all the major components of the Raptor engine, at least the ones that Elon Musk has revealed so far and how they all fit together. Most of these metal components and housings are going to be made up of special alloy that SpaceX formulated called SX500. It's a mixture of copper, aluminum, and steel. Elon has said that this metal is devised for high strength at extreme temperature and extreme oxidation resistance. It can hold up to 12,000 psi of pressure and survive the super hot oxygen rich gas that flows through the middle of the Raptor body. Most of these castings are going to be connected together by heavy flanges with heavy bolts, for now at least. Elon does want to eliminate as many flanges from the engine design as possible and instead move to more welded interfaces. Anytime that you're working with threaded fasteners in an environment with a lot of pressure and temperature variation and vibration, there is going to be a potential for failure. The Raptor is very difficult to seal, and preventing leaks is equally as hard, so that's something that still needs to be solved. There are also going to be a small amount of components in the engine that are 3D printed. This may come as a surprise, but that's another process that Elon wants to remove as much as possible. No 3D printing on the Raptor. It's good technology, but in this application, 3D printing limits the ability to scale up manufacturing. It adds costs and slows down the production rate. If this all sounds fairly simple in construction, that's very much on purpose. The goal with the Raptor is to get the cost of production down as much as possible and the speed up as much as possible. Elon's primary goal is for the cost per ton of thrust for the Raptor to be under $1,000. So that means each engine needs to cost at most 250 grand to build. By the way, if you're enjoying the content we create here on the Tesla space and would like to support us, check out our Patreon page. We've got some exclusive perks for our Patreon supporters, and it helps us grow the team and continue producing this content. The location where all of this engine building is taking place is at the SpaceX facility in McGregor, Texas. It's about halfway in between Dallas and Austin. This has been the primary engine testing ground for SpaceX since their beginning back in the early 2000s. This is where the first Merlin engines and the early Falcon prototypes were all test flown for the first time. The McGregor site has a lot of history. It was originally a bomb factory in World War II, then it was used by Aerojet Rocketdyne to test rocket engines in the 60s and 70s. Then it went back to the munitions industry for a while before returning to use as a rocket testing ground for a company called Beale Aerospace in the late 90s. They were trying to develop the most powerful engine since the old F-1 from the Saturn V moon rocket. They failed, and that led Elon Musk to scoop up the place and bring it into the 21st century of aerospace design. Up until now, 
all of the Raptor engines have been manufactured by SpaceX in California and then shipped down to McGregor for testing. They strap the engine down to a test stand and then fire it up to see what happens. Sometimes it explodes, other times it just melts. But the Raptors that succeed are shipped down further south to Starbase for installation in a Starship or Super Heavy Booster prototype. Now, obviously for the sake of efficiency, it would make more sense to build the engines in the same place that you test them. Not only does that eliminate a long haul truck journey across half the country, but it also helps to speed up that iteration process that we've been talking about. Now, SpaceX engineers can try a new idea on the Raptor design immediately, strap it to the test firing rig and see what happens, then go back to the production line and make more adjustments. This is going to increase the pace of development and improvement for the Raptor and get the company ever closer to their super ambitious goal of between two and four Raptor engines built per day. For a bit of context, NASA signed a $1.2 billion deal with Aerojet Rocketdyne to build new RS-25 engines for the SLS rocket that will carry out the Artemis moon launches for the next decade. And they are looking to have four engines made per year. That is definitely on the slower end of the scale, but still much more indicative of the rocket engine manufacturing business than what SpaceX is trying to accomplish here. It's going to be absolutely unprecedented. And we get to come along for the ride. Hopefully you found this video informative today. Let us know if you think this is really possible to build 1,000 rocket engines in a year to power a fleet of 1,000 starships in the next decade. That would be pretty wild. Don't forget to give this video a thumbs up today if you liked it. That is so important for getting our content out to more people. If you enjoy the content, then you'd probably also enjoy our weekly newsletter. So sign up with the link down below at theteslaspace.com. A huge thank you to all of our Patreon supporters who are listed on the screen now. You help us make the best content we can, and we really appreciate it. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you in the next one.